I am heart wide open, running towards my problems. I don't wish to have them anymore, therefore I wish to work through them and release them and get rid of them. Well, hello my friends. So as you know, I believe that there are no coincidences and no accidents in life. And there recently was a fire at my gym. Yes, a blazing vault fire. The rumor on the street is that a gentleman right at 5 a.m. threw a firework down a city grate and caused an explosion in the electric vault in the West Loop of Chicago which was directly in front of the Soho house. And so it was assumed that it was in the basement of the Soho house, which would destroy the elevator shafts and the electricity and just be a huge mess for the Soho house. So I was quite traumatized by this rumor, but it turned out that it was just in front of the Soho house. So the Soho house went unscathed, but it, it activated something in me that I forgot was a part of my story. And it made me realize why I am at this point in my life with YouTube and the lifestyle that I'm creating for myself. So as you know, I worked for my dad. I started at 14 years old. He owned a newspaper. And at the time, I didn't think anything of it, but part of my job when I got 16, when I got a car at 16 years old, was to ambulance chase. And follow up on stories and literally, oh, there's a fire truck, where's it going? Follow it, you know? Go sneak around, get the inside scoop, like major car accidents, like find out what happened, um, explosions, all kinds of weird stuff that I haven't been affiliated with since I quit working there in 2013. It's now 2014, so it's been 11 years but I was so disassociated with that version and that part of my story and my life that I forgot that being a reporter was something that was part of my history, which was part of my glow up, right? Like my life story. I guess we wouldn't call it a glow up because that stage was not glowing. Um, but it definitely helped formulate how I deep dive into things and how I want to educate and teach and explain and get the facts and figure things out and understand and explain and provide and give information. And you know, it's just, it was, I just snapped right back into it. Like I didn't see the news article. I was on a, a bike, a, a Divi bike. We have them in Chicago. It's a rentable bike. You know, you just put in your credit card, you scan it, whatever. And I rolled up and the street was closed. And I was like, what's the 411 officer? And he's like, gave me a little blip. And then I rode my bicycle around to the other entrance of the Soho. And I was like, hey, you bystander, what was your experience? And then I overheard someone that was inside the hotel. Sir, what was your experience? Like I just reactivated this reporter <laughs> investigator inside of me. And it made me realize why I'm enjoying and thriving and glowing the way that I am is because that takes me back to that phase of my life. And this channel is providing the same thing. Like me going on a trip and explaining to you the situations that happen either with the airlines or the locals or my own perception of the city or environment, all of that is something that I wish to share with you, that I wish to give back as a, hey, if you ever go to this place, be on the watch for this, or hey, if you ever experience this situation, this is how I navigated it, this is how I got through it, because, and if we go back even further back to when I was younger, I was a narcissistic snack and I was a people pleaser, and from a very young age, I was conditioned by my parents to take care of them, to provide for them. So when I provide value, when I help someone make a decision, when I make things easier for someone, it fills my soul. It, 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 and it's challenging in relationships now and I'm navigating that, right? As I said in my Barbados video, I'm learning that I am not just doing A as a reaction anymore. Now I'm doing Z and I'm not even consciously aware or thinking about 
the shift or the change or the difference. I'm just doing it. I really want to share the information that I've accumulated and I've learned and I've put into practice, like literally leading by example, living v v this new version of my life. I come from a background of working for a father who literally told me that I was lucky he didn't pay me over, I think it was $32,000 a year because then I would be in a different tax bracket. So I was lucky that he was paying me $28,000 a year because it was saving me money. Like the brain warp, misuse, deceit, manipulation, I mean, we'll just call it what it is, abuse, was real for me. And I was living paycheck to paycheck. I wasn't traveling. I wasn't buying anything. I actually was forced to stay living with him until my late 20s because I couldn't financially afford to move out. And that was strategy. He was doing that intentionally like this was all part of his plan he did this to my stepmom before me and my real mother before her where he learned he could manipulate their life by giving them a job and then holding the purse strings very tightly and limiting their ability to run away and i know my stepmom ran away twice this channel is going to be very fluid and that it's not going to consistently be me doing a talking head because newsflash i'm actually going to be relocating and won't live in this box for very much longer um we've got 90 days left in this box so this will be going away in 90 days so i want you to get comfortable um, observing my talking head videos while I'm in another country, while I'm in a hotel, while I'm in a cab, because the content and what I wish to sh battery malfunction. Okay. The content will be continuous. I am forever a working piece of art. There, I just called myself a piece of art. I will always be shifting and you can ask an artist, when is the piece done? And They'll tell you never because they're always then thinking of another like, level or a dimension or a shading or whatever that they can do. Not all artists, um, some of them, you know, but I have found that that's, that's like, my life. Different. It's a piece of art like, and I'm so thankful that a for the overlapping for existence of this experience helped me with this. There was growth and healing in Barbados that will be till the end of time helpful. There was healing in Greece till the end of time. There was healing in Italy to the end of time. Like people have said, and two people in the last week have made this comment to me and I found it so judgmental and limiting thought on their behalf. Like I don't agree with anything they're saying. They both said to me, a man that knows me from my past, one of my ex-boyfriends, we give him a huge thank you for his guidance and help. There's a little video here. And a woman who's never met me in person. She's never met me in person. She did a 20 minute FaceTime with me and she's made her own assumptions. And they've both said to me in the same week, you're running away from your problems. These travels, these trips, you're running away from your problems. Um, I'm sitting in Chicago right now and there's no problems. I don't have problems. I have a job that's thriving. I have quality friendships that I love. I have a great apartment. I have great clothes. I have great food. I have an amazing view. I have a great life. Nothing is challenging me here. I don't have family here. I don't have a relationship with a man. I don't have anything that would poke at me but traveling international and not knowing the language, not having money, um, not having a plan and realizing that I, what I thought was gonna happen is not what happened. That's for me the growth. And so yes, it's not happening in my living room and it's not happening at my local cafe, sure. But I'm not running from my problems. Me and my therapist would actually agree I'm running towards my problems. Do you think it's easy to travel as a six foot blonde to a country where people don't have blonde hair and I don't know the language 
and I could be seen as a sexual object. Do you, th do you think that's easy? Do you, th do you think I'm going to struggle, have problems? Um, they're going to talk down to me and be chauvinistic and insult me and belittle me? Because, yeah, that's what happened in Italy and Greece. Um, do you think I'm going to be catcalled and sexualized and harassed and feel uncomfortable walking around by myself? Yeah. I, I would say yes, you know, so I'm going on these trips and I'm spending the whole time by myself basically. Okay. Yeah. I can meet someone for a dinner or a coffee or like the boat guy can have like fun with me for an hour on the boat. Right. But t probably 20 hours of the day, I'm alone with my thoughts. And that for me is where the meat and potatoes are. Here in Chicago, I can distract myself with editing. I can take out a client. I can show up to a friend's networking event. I can go to a concert. I can do all these like surface level shits, right? I'm not wanting surface level. I have been trying to inspire you via this channel to live your best life. Think outside the box, live grandiose, right? Play, play big, not play small. So why would I, why would I stay here where there's, where there's no issue, where there's no trouble, where there's no problem? And when the ex-boyfriend said it to me, it stung harder. With the woman that barely knew me, I was like, okay, you know nothing about me. I thank you for making an assumption, but you're wrong. Um, but when he said it, mind you, we haven't really had a relationship in 10 years, so he doesn't really know where I'm at. Um, he also has substance abuse issues where he was probably high because he's high 20 hours, maybe more of the day. Uh, <laughs> but it was kind of like a zing because it sometimes as a people pleaser, when someone says thing, something, I'm like, oh, is that right? Is that true? And I think it's really good to reflect on when someone gives criticism, whether it's justified or not, to contemplate it, to process it, to internalize it and be like, hmm, is any of that what they said true? And to kind of sit with it. Because I think it's good to have criticism. I think it's great for someone to offer feedback. I recently went on a date. We won't get too into it because it's, it's a juicy story and that needs its own video. So stay tuned for that. Where we were at a hotel and they told me, after I reject them sexually, they told me that I was potentially going to make them lose their job because everyone was complaining about me because I was so negative. Let's, let's give that a pause. I really genuinely believe who I show up for you guys on this channel is who I am. I am allergic to BS and I actually fail at acting because I just am so uncomfortable with pretending. I'm one of the most positive, giving, inspirational people. And the irony was is earlier before this person said it, I literally helped this gentleman make a decision to cut back on his smoking and maybe really like help him reprocess like why he has this addiction and like he was going on his lunch break and smoking five cigarettes and like just like, you know, and this other woman who was obsessed with Diet Cokes and was like, in a few weeks I'm going on vacation and I'm going to, I'm going to quit. I'm going to, I'm going to quit Diet Cokes. So 24 hours before this man made this comment, I had genuinely gotten into the depths of someone's soul to help them release a bad behavior that they both said they were unhappy with, disgusted by their behaviors and wanting to make a change. And he's trying to brainwash me that I'm, people are complaining that I'm a negative person and that I just, so again, when someone as a formal person, as a recovering people pleaser. My girlfriend and I, we had sushi yesterday and we were chatting and she's like, you're in recovery. And I was like, oh my God, I've never heard it expressed so beautifully. Yes. Yes, I've had these problems in the past. Yes, I've worked on healing them. Yes, I'm pretty healed. Yes, I'm like 90, 95% there. I'm still in recovery. And if I were an alcoholic or a sex addict, I'm pretty much 
guaranteed I'm going to always be in recovery because I'm always working on something. So why do I have this immense pressure that I can't have a setback or a lapse or, you know, be gaslit and let it hook onto me and make me spin out of control a little bit? Like, of course, after 40 years of behaving and experiencing life in a certain way, now that I'm six months clean of people pleasing or whatever, of course I'm going to relapse a little and have like doubts, not relapse like, you know, behave in a highly emotional way and like act out and be dramatic. I was super proud of my behavior and the way I showed up after this gentleman made those comments. I was, I was like, who, who is she? She, wow, she's, that's sexy. Like, <laughs> I was like, I called Amy, my breathwork person, and we chatted, and, she, and I, before I even had this trip, I said to her, I feel like I'm going into my midterms, and she's, she said to me after I had these conversations with this person, baby, you aced your final exam, like, aced that test, and I felt so good about it. Now, yeah, in the moment, I had some emotional bubblings, and I had some spiraling thoughts, and yeah, I looked sad visibly. You could see me looking sad, but it didn't dim my light. I still would show up to the beach and chat with someone and smile at them and feel like a connection, human to human, about being raw and real and vulnerable. Six months ago, I wouldn't have been able to process that. Six months ago, if someone would have treated me or behaved in the way that this gentleman did, I would have been devastated, I would have been dramatic, I would have felt ungrounded, unsettled, I would have, it would have taken weeks. I think it was a few hours. <laughs> I mean, I was, I'm still like in awe of myself in the best way. I really learned a lot and I wouldn't take anything back or change anything to full circle what my ex had said about running from my problems. I wouldn't have had that encounter. I wouldn't have had that experience if I didn't go on that trip. And so I like to think that those trips are opening portals to growth and healing. It's part of the reason why I'm going to start being a little nomadic. I've got things set into motion where I'm going to spend a few weeks in one of my most favorite places and spend a few weeks in a country I've never been and just really sit with self because I think I used to travel every week uh, since 2020, I was traveling every week to Orange County. And then in 2021, I was traveling every week to Palm Beach. And I was living a dual life. I would live here in Chicago and work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then Monday, I would fly back to either city and relax by the shoreline and just process and reassess my life and, and work on myself inside. And I wasn't running away from myself at that time. I mean, m moving to a new place and not knowing anybody, that's a very humbling, grounding, sit with self. That's not running away. Running away would be going to Cancun, Mexico at an all-inclusive and getting wasted and pretending that my life was great and just like partying, which is what this ex-boyfriend probably does a lot of. So to him, he was projecting, right? He was projecting onto me what he does when he's in his feels. He goes on a crazy party week where he just like gets blasted and just forgets about everything. So he was projecting that, that my trips are that. Forgetting that I don't do drugs. I don't do, I don't drink. I don't, I wake up at sunrise, five o'clock, 5.30 in the morning and I, literally walk a beach where there's not any other human being and I think about me, my life, how I want to show up. So yeah, thank you for letting me process that in real time because it was still kind of irritating me and now I realize that's what it was. He was projecting because he would go and get blasted. So in the next few months, I really want to take a journey and go to places I've never been because Oh, what I was getting at, 2020 was Orange County, California, LA. Uh, 2021 was Palm Beach. 2022 was the passing of my brother. So that kind of took a shift. And 
I waited six months after he passed to go to Egypt, which was one of the most transformative trips of my life. And then I went to New Zealand and Australia. I went to like big trips. Instead of going like every week, I was going to like 14 hour of travel trips far away and spending time alone. And those trips really brought up stuff and cleared stuff. And so far this year, it's August, you know, I've been to Greece, I've been to Italy, I've been to Barbados, you know, there's a few other places that I went in between. My intention to this video was to remind you, you can run away from your problems, even in your own house. You can self-medicate, you can use the TV, which they want you to use, so. I actually put a big, a dry erase board in front of my TV because I'm really trying to not watch TV. It's such a knee jerk for me that I've earned TV time that I get to lay on this beautiful, this couch is basically a bed, sometimes more comfortable than my actual bed. I see, you know, like, a, oh, I need to reward myself because I don't eat sugar and I don't drink and I don't do drugs. When I lay in front of it, I get yucky with myself because not learning anything. I feel like I'm wasting my time. I literally feel like I'm wasting my time. I could be filming or editing or reading or learning or watching a YouTube or educating myself or having a conversation with someone or journaling or manifesting or doing anything. I think I'm just addicted to positive behaviors. That was an aha moment that I just had. I have curated a life and cultivated a lifestyle where I am addicted to positive, healthy environments. Let's just sit with that. Now, I'm not 100% perfect. Never said that. Don't, don't misquote me. I'm a human, I will always have error. I will always mess up. I will always be learning and discovering. That's definitely not what I'm saying. But I'm enamored that I, just two years ago, was self-medicating with alcohol, being sexual with people that did not deserve me or my energy. Um, I've been celibate now almost a year. Really mind-blowing to me to look back and reflect on this past year of how I've really transformed my mindset and behaviors and I'm not gonna lie the number one thing quitting alcohol quitting alcohol because I would drink even just one drink and I don't know what it is about my cortisol blood sugar but after drinking I would come home and I would want to eat an entire pizza it would make me so hungry processing the alcohol sugar whatever it was and then i would of course not have anything healthy on hand when i got home so i would eat sugar so that was and then i'd wake up the next morning and feel guilt and shame and now after so long of being so sacred to my body like to heal the candido candida SIBO, and h pylori that i had that i struggled with that i got inflammation from that i ballooned up to 200 pounds. I became so hyper-focused on doing only healthy, clean things for my body that I did it so long it became my normal. I'm impressed with myself. And it took me until this minute to vocalize and be able to put that together that that's what I've done. Again, I wish to lead by example. If I fall on my face and I make a mess, I'm gonna tell you, this is a no BS channel. <laughs> this is me being authentic, raw, real, and uncomfortable with you. I've made comments to people that I have friendships with here, and I've been genuine with them in that my YouTube channel knows me more than anyone. I feel so comfortable sharing my dirty, excuse me, I'm not dirty, my, my layers with you. I feel like you're like little sis, you know, bestie. Like I just feel like giving you the scoop from the future so that where you are today in your 20s, 30s, whatever, you can be like, okay, I see a little bit of myself in her. I have those tendencies. I've had those behaviors. I've had that family construct. I've had those crazy relationships. I've had that craving for alcohol. I've had that sugar addiction. 
what can I take from this video? What can I take from this information from real life raw experience and make positive healthy shifts in my life? Even if it's just one thing that I say each week, maybe you, maybe sure you want to binge them all. Please. I would love nothing more. Share, tell all your friends, please give me the love. It helps my channel so much. You have no idea. It helps me. It keeps motivating me to do more and get better and to thrive and to just be more vulnerable and raw when people show up and say, Hey, that meant something to me. Hey, I appreciate that you said that. Like what takes you five seconds to type stays with me permanently. I hope you understand that you know so thank you but back into the wrap up of this video for the week i'm really proud of me and i'm really proud of you even just watching these videos even just kind of pulling back the curtain and contemplating is this something i want to make a shift in my life do i want to give up alcohol do i want to be celibate for a year it's such a wow. My girlfriend and I were swapping videos this morning. I've known her since kindergarten. She has been celibate since 2021. Three years she's been celibate. And she said it, not me. She has found that the more she has held back from intimacy with other partners, the more spiritual and in alignment she has become. And I want you to consider that, sure, I'm all about body positivity. I'm all about a sexual revolution. I'm all about the woman embracing the female body and using it however she wants to. There's no judgment on this channel. When you kiss or intimately touch, even just touch someone, there's a transfer of energy. And if that person has unresolved, unhealed, unhealthy-ish on them, you are vacuum sealing. You are vacuuming it off of them and adding it to your vibration. I don't know how it's humanly, physically possible to have intercourse or any sort of sexual act with another human being and not take on their energy. I'm going to make an assumption here. If this is a hookup or a person that's not willing to give you commitment or not interested in more than a hookup, how likely is it that their energy is 100% clean? What's the ratio percentage you think? you really want to focus on, they say your vibration is the five people that you hang out with the most. Well, let's make sure those five people are like a plus. You should always have a friend that's better than you. You should always have a friend that makes more, lives a better life, has the relationship that you want. Please sis, promise me this one thing. You will not take relationship advice from someone not in a relationship you respect. If you have a best friend who is negatively or toxically mistreated by their partner, please do not listen to a word that they offer as advice. When you are having relationship issues, go to someone that's in a marriage with children, if that's what you're looking for, and ask them, how would you handle this situation? What's your advice? Because that's the person you want to lean in towards, right? Like that person is practicing what they're preaching. You would hope, I mean, if they're married and they seem happy and everything's whatever. Again, everything's an illusion, no assumption, no judgments. But that was something that in my 20s I wasn't contemplating and I was making a mess of things. I would be dating someone, specifically this guy who told me that I'm running from my feelings. I was dating him and he canceled because he was really tired from running two companies. And at the time my girlfriend was like, oh, F him, just go out to a bar and like hook up with somebody and like whatever. And I was like, that's the way to get him back. It sounded terrible. And she was like, yeah. And so sure enough, I went to a bar and danced in the windows and 
I talked to and flirted with a guy, but it didn't go very far. And the next day, my guy was like, what are you doing? Like, what was that? And it, it made him, it pushed him away. And I think we broke up like a week later. So this woman was the byproduct of a divorce where she had had an affair with her husband's best friend and was in a very dark place and very unhappy, but she at the time was my bestie. And so I took her advice. That's the wrong person to listen to. I think for this video, I really want to hone in on the fact that I am not running away from my problems. I am heart wide open, running towards my problems. I don't wish to have them anymore, therefore I wish to work through them and release them and get rid of them. I hope you're thinking the same. Even if just one day at a time, you just make little baby steps, just make little changes here and there. Even just how you reply to people, the tone of your voice, like I used to have such a tone, like a sharp eh, eh. It, like I could destroy people in one sentence. I could annihilate them with such a tone, with such a face, with the whip of my tongue. When I was cornered, <laughs> watch out. But now I just, you know, this experience with this last partner, well, he's not a partner, let's not call him that. The last gentleman that I went on a date with, after a situation happened, I was like, hey, can we have a conversation about what's happening? It was a very, I think adding in a tongue lashing is only gonna escalate things and if that's how you choose to show up, that's fine. Live your best life. But living my best life means keeping it chill, keeping the tone level, coming from integrity and kindness, even though I've been betrayed and hurt, it doesn't mean I need to re-hurt you. The vendetta within me is cooling. I used to have so much rage. I used to be so angry at how I had been treated for 30 years that I was walking around with a blowtorch. And I was like, oh, you think you're gonna mess with me? And I would just set people on fire. And now I just let them go because I would much rather hang out with y'all or go for a walk and sit at a park by myself with the birds than fire myself up and unleash negative toxic-ish that was keeping me sick, that was keeping me small, and that was keeping me held back from living the life that I wish for you. Living my ideal life may not look the same as yours, but I want you to live your ideal life. Did you write it out yet? Did you vision board it yet? Make sure you watch my vision board video. That, I actually am gonna re-edit it because Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds are on there and I think they've been canceled. So I think it's time to cut them out. You know, I, I used to think that they were relationship goals and now I see she's kind of a bully. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for taking care of yourself. I care about you and I want you to thrive and live your best life. And if that means telling you all the ways that have fallen on my face, so be it. Let me be your big sister. Let me be your leader. Let me gather the knowledge, share it, and then showcase it and act it out in real time and then let you know how it went, right? <laughs> I'm kind of like a test dummy. <laughs> like... Okay, my loves. Thanks so much. Love you. Talk to you soon. Bye.